welcome to a series called the book of Enoch where we're going through the book of Enoch verse by verse uh, to see what it's going to be like in the end times Enoch prophesied about what it'll be like in Christ's second coming he he lived in the days of Noah he was the great grandfather of Noah he was the seventh from Adam he knew demons he knew them by name he talked with them the insight that he has and the prophecies that he have are very important to understand more so when Jude talked about those demons that are with us, that dwell among us during the end times, he quotes Jude, or he quotes Enoch here. So with that being said, we just finished chapter one, um, where we he talks about his, Christ's return, uh, judgment on all, um, and what that looks like. And I'd also like to add in this moment that I prayed wholeheartedly about doing this series. And God said to do it. Uh, but the strange thing is he said to do it from a cave. So that's where I am. Uh, with that being said, Enoch chapter 2, verse 1. Observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order, each in its season, and transgress not against their appointed order. Behold ye the earth, and give heed to the things which take place upon it from first to last, how steadfast they are, how none of the things upon earth change, but all the works of God appear to you. Behold the summer and the winter, how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds and dew and rain lie upon it. This is an interesting thing because this is essentially this prophecy that Enoch has here talks about the order of the universe and nature and the earth and how it really doesn't change. Humans change. But the order of the earth of the universe and nature, it does not change. It continues to go the way that it did in seasons. The season comes, the season goes, and then the other one comes back, and then the other one goes. And it just continues that way, on and on and on. But the whole time, all the works of God appear to you. This is fascinating. You know, there's a couple things we can see here. You know, we only use the Bible as a cross-reference. Well, let's start with Ecclesiastes 3.1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Time to be born, a time to die. Time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted. Time to kill and a time to heal. Time to break down and a time to build up. Time to weep and a time to laugh. Time to mourn and a time to dance. Time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose time to keep and a time to throw away, time to tear and a time to sow, time to keep silence and a time to speak, time to love and a time to hate, time of war and a time of peace. It's how God does it. He orchestrates everything in seasons. And even though nothing ever changes, it's obvious to us. Like we can see it all, you know, if you look at Romans, 1 verse 18 it says for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness now we just read about that let's just start there and enoch if you look at the last episode it ends with behold he come with ten thousand of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all the works of other ungodliness which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him then it gets into observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven. All right, now let's go back to Romans. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness to men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And this is ultimately the, the, the consequence of not seeing that God is orchestrating all this. You know, because when you see that God orchestrates all this, you realize, well, nothing's changing. Everything's the same, which means evolution isn't real, which means that, that it, it's going to be the same then as it is now. Nature doesn't change. It just kind of this season comes, this season goes, then that season comes back, then that season goes and over and 
over and over again for all of humanity. But if you keep going here in Romans, you know, it says here with Enoch, sorry, observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits and the luminaries which are in heaven, how they all rise and set in order each in its season and transgress not against their appointed order. Behold ye the earth and give heed to the things which take place upon it from first to last, how steadfast they are, how none of the things upon the earth change, but all the works of God appear to you. Behold the summer and the winter, how the whole earth is filled with water, clouds and dew and rain lie upon it. So now knowing that, when we go back to Romans where it says, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. So they change this image of God, the creator, into this corruptible image made like, well, man figured it out. We It wasn't God. It was all these birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. That's what it was. They all turned into man. They created stuff. But God says his invisible attributes are clearly seen, so they are without excuse. And Enoch says, Behold ye the earth and give heed to the things which take place upon it from first to last, how steadfast they are, how none of the things upon the earth change, but all the works of God appear to you. It's all very obvious. It's here. Even this cave, God made this. The sun coming up at the entrance of this cave. All that is perfect order orchestrated by God. It's beautiful. Any thoughts or insight on any of that, definitely put it below. Keep joining us and welcome to the Book of Enoch.